Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. A guy named Greg Owens reached out to me and wanted to know how to create an effect like the sequence here in Blender. So here we go. Suppose we've got our object that we want to attach sequence to here. I'm going to hop into edit mode on that object and select the face that I want the sequence to be attached to. Then I will use I to inset that face and use Shift D to duplicate it. Then I'll move it out a little bit and use A to select the whole mesh. After that, I'll just hit P and click by loose parts to separate out this face. So now we have a separate mesh to control the sequence with. We want to go into edit mode on that as well and just give it some subdivisions, just so that we have a relatively high amount of vertices. Then we can exit edit mode and go to our EV settings, open up the hair dropdown, and change the rendering type from strand to strip. Then we can go down to the particle settings tab. I'll add in a new hair particle system and give it a length of 0.2 meters or so. Then I'll scroll all the way down to the hair shape settings. To make the hair render as squares, we're going to toggle off this close tip option and make the diameter root and tip the same size. Then I'll increase the radius scale and the hair becomes squares. Now we'll scroll back up to the emission settings and change the number of hairs to the amount of vertices we have on our plane. In my case, I have 1024 vertices, so that's the number of hairs I will generate. To make these generate evenly across the entire mesh, we can uncheck random order and change the particles per face to 1. To make this plane not render and just have the sequence, we can go to the viewport display and render display dropdowns and uncheck show emitter under both of those. I'd leave it rendering in the viewport for now though, just so you can see it. The last step for the particles is to enable hair dynamics. Now, let's move on to a bit of shading work. In the shading workspace, I'm going to give this a material. For some basic colored sequins, we can just lower the roughness and give it a color, and up the metallic to 1 based on the look you're going for. But if instead you want to project an image texture, you can do that too by dropping in an image texture and giving it a texture coordinate and a mapping node to scale and rotate until it looks good, and since it's only rendering on the hair, the fact that it's not pixelated shouldn't be a big deal. If you absolutely want to make it more blocky though, add in a vector math node and drop it on the vector line from that mapping node. Set the vector math node to snap, and then add in a regular math node and a value node. Hook the value node into the bottom of the math node, and then the math node into the bottom socket of the vector math node. Set the math node to divide, and give it a regular value of 1. Now you can use the value node to give your images this more pixelated and bloggy look. If you get really close to these sequins in the viewport, they won't hold up in a render, but they will look fine for mid to long distance renders. The beauty of using a hair particle system like this is that we can affect these sequins with force objects to make them move. Try playing with the noise value on these force objects, moving them around, and see what you can get with it. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.